Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us again on the mid-season showdown here at the St. Clair College Gaming Nexus. I am Daniil Betterson McGee Brown, joined by Owen Hybrid Mantha, and it has been an action-packed day so far. And I'd like to just to kind of give you a preface for what we're about to see going to this next game. Here's a live recreation of what Owen said when he saw the team sheet for one of the competitors. Huh? <laughs> so I like to I like to explore that a little bit with you as we're gonna be seeing Ashton Cox versus and I I apologize I'm trying my best here Jean Ulysses um, Jean Ulysses uh, Serrano Albuquerque okay, I'm not even gonna try I'm, I'm not sorry. gonna try I'm sorry it's it's a cool name though Jean Ulysses Yes Okay Cool So what was that huh all about going to this team Well we have Chris Elia Terra Fire we have Registeel Um. It's a very, it's leaning into the trick room style, right? You have Chris mm. Elliott, which is not a super, super common trick room setter in this current format. You've seen it in past formats, obviously. Chris Elliott is still a really good Pokemon and it's like great in singles formats mm -hmm. and stuff like that, but you don't see it too often, at least right now. Um, it's going to go up kind of great against like other Landorus's and stuff like that, obviously with with its Levitate ability. Um, but but it's a very interesting pick for sure. Got the Trick Room to bring out Ursaluna uh, Hisuian. Um, so like normal Ursaluna, not Blood Moon Ursaluna. Okay. Um, which is going to be pretty uh, pretty solid. Obviously, it's a Guts Flame Orb, you know, Ursaluna. Pretty standard. Um, so uh, it, it's, just, it, it's just a strange team for me. Um, the only Pokemon that's like sort of fast-ish is like Raging Bolt, and Raging Bolt's not a fast Pokemon. So they're all kind of heavily leaning into the Trick Room style. Like, this mm -hmm. team is going to move last 90% of the time. Especially looking at Ash Ashton's team, for sure. You have Fluttermane, super fast. You have <laughs> Shen Pao, super fast. Ogre Pong, super fast. Uh, so, like, Amoongus is the only slow Pokemon they have. They have Urshifu Water, and they have Raging Bolt, so right, you still have some sort of mirror matchups. Um, but if Cresselia does come out and they do end up leading with like Chen Pao, Fluttermane, or Orgapong, it, it's a pretty easy like just click Trick Room and you kind of just win because speed control is just there. Your entire team is pretty much slower than all of Ashen's team except for like the Amoongus in the back line. Um, but, but it's just very interesting. I saw the Cresselia and Registeel and I was like, oh, oh, oh okay. What year is it? <laughs> Interesting. It, it, we're, 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 we're going back. It's a, it's a flashback. One thing I, I want to point out, quite literally, it's just... Wellspring Ogre Pond, Wellspring Mask Ogre Pond is such like a common force here mm -hmm. that is, <laughs> the team sheet doesn't say like the Hearth Fire Ogre Pond, it's just an Ogre Pond Fire. It's just <laughs> fire. It's like, who, who knows what it's called? <laughs> no one uses it. It's just fire. I don't Hearth know. Flame? Hearth Flame. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That's the point. It's just fire on here. I know Hearth it. Flame. Yeah, because you're Why weird. don't you know it? Because I'm not weird. I just said it. You, what? I'm weird enough to be very excited. You're wearing a for Gengar shoot shirt, dude. Gengar's not weird. You're weird for wearing a Gengar shirt. I'm not Look, weird. I came here with my St. Patrick's fit on. I got my sweater and <laughs> stuff a like green that. St. Patrick's. I got my green sweater. He asked me why I'm not wearing background. green. We got green Pokemon. It's it. Bro, get with the program. What are you I doing? I am with the program. And the program here is we're in Swiss round three. We're mm -hmm. going to get. We're gonna have Ashton Cox versus Jean Ulysses. And these teams are looking very exciting. Like you mentioned, Trick Room, classic vanilla Trick Room team against a more, again, generalist this meta, this standard, this uh, format, it's a powerful team. The most unconventional pick here is going to be the Hearth Flame Ogre Pond. Uh, and the lineup is, is using oh. Stomping Tantrum, Ivy Cudgel, Follow I, Me, Spike Shield. Anything sticking out to you so far? I got to disagree with you on that controversial pick, right? Okay. Ogre Pong Fire is not a controversial pick. Let's and put it's that. A, it's the most on this team. This is the I, most I, unusual. I wouldn't even team. say that for sure. I would say Urshifu Water is more of the controversial pick, right? Um, oftentimes, right now, because of Ogre Pong Wellspring, you see a lot more of Single Strike Ur uh, Urshifus coming out, like the Darken uh, I mean, we did fighting see, type. like, what, three uh, Rapid Strikes Urshifus? I have seen a couple, but that's <laughs> like, the whole point of these mid-season showdowns is you kind of see teams um, that te people are trying to prep for, you know, like a big tournament like Orlando, for example, coming up very soon. So oftentimes you see people bring uh, niche and weird Pokemon to these tournaments to see kind of how they perform and how they stack up um, in like a sort of like sort of current meta format, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so like it's, it's not a totally weird pick. It, it's, it's just interesting for sure. 
for sure. And uh, I, I'm, I am excited to see how things work out for both of these trainers. Uh, we were talking to the previous trainers who just battled a little bit before. True. And, you know, they said that they play each other a lot. These are the things that you wouldn't get just by watching them play. But with that added context, it makes a lot of sense. Like, even the different types of moves, switch-ins that they were doing that might have seemed unconventional because yeah. you know how they play. So... Obviously, we have these two competitors up here. Whether or not they have that same kind of dynamic going on, we don't know for sure. But I definitely would love to talk to them afterwards after this game to see what kind of factors went into the decision-making process to see, you know, is there more here? But uh, as we're heading in relatively blind as to how both of these competitors want to play and whether or not they're blind to how they want to play as well, you know, whether or not these guys are familiar with each other or not, um, just based on paper, what do you think we're most likely to be seeing? Oh, oh. I, I, just, oh. I just pointed out something. Uh, we have a choice specs Fluttermain. That Fluttermain does come out for Ashen. That Fluttermain has Misty, Misty terrain. terrain as a fourth move. So very strange for sure. It's going to go for the Shadow Ball on Cresselia. A good play probably, as, as long as Cresselia doesn't Drasilize, which I don't think it will turn one. Cresselia is probably going to go and click that Trick Room, and they're going to double lean into Cresselia, knowing that Trick Room is not what they want. Ashton does not want Trick Room to come up, so they're going to try and double in and hopefully take it out before it has a chance to get that Trick Room off. Yeah, so as we see the Shadow Ball coming out, right into the Cresselia. Ooh. Huge hit of damage. With that Volt Switch, it's most likely going to go down. No! And it lives! Survive! That's huge for John Ulysses. You know, losing the Cresselia most likely would have just been the end of the battle, if you ask me. But uh, with that surviving, it's going to get the Trick Room off at the very least, and it's going to be able to continue pushing forward. But with the Amoongus coming out and the Parting Shot onto the Amoongus, again, with that Switch out, it's not going to have the most impact. You don't really care about the special attack or the attack on your Among Us, but you get your Cinderar out, and you're gonna have the benefit of bringing something in, seeing that it's an Among Us and Fluttermane you're gonna be against now. So you're gonna go for the most optimal play here. You're gonna be bringing out your Ursa Luna, not Blood Moon, just regular Hisuian Ursa Luna with that Trick Room up. Now that Ursa Luna is most likely the fastest Pokemon on the field, if not the Among Us. Yeah, it definitely is the fast. I, I think Amoongus actually, you know what, you're right. I think Amoongus is a bit faster, potentially. Spore's still going to be a Due to, yeah, Spore's probably going to come up here, which is going to be tough. I, I do think the play is for Ursa Luna to protect. E even though, like, does Ursa Luna have protect, actually? Let's double check. It does have protect. Okay. Um, 51. I'm trying to do the calculation. Actually, yeah. Amoongus is definitely going to be faster now, now that Trick Room is up. Um, so it's going to have a quick go of getting Spore up. Um... So it'll be interesting. I do think, like, if I was Jean Ulysses, uh, Ulysses, whatever, I would protect, personally. Uh, but now, as we're heading into this next turn with 10 seconds, a choice will have to be made at some point. I feel like just the Griselli is kind of... the Spore, though. Sorry? Not going for the Spore. Not going for the Spore. You're right. It's going to just use the Pond You want to make sure that Griselli is out of the battle. True. Uh, you don't... Again... Uh, Ashton doesn't know what this Cresselia is running. We do, but you don't know what other tricks it has up the sleeve, so you don't want to deal with it anymore. Yeah. Earthquake's going to come out. That might be devastating thanks to the guts and the flame. It's going to oh. be a crit onto the Flutter main to knock it out, and that is not what you want to see if you're Ashton. Citrus Berry is going to help regenerate just a little bit of that damage on the Amoongus, but now with one of your Pokemon down, Ashton either going to lean into the Raging Bolt or potentially one Pokemon we have not seen yet, which is going to be the Qian Pao Focus Sash. It could be a threat here, but it's still relatively frail. And with that Ursa Luna being so, well, so slow, it's going to be so fast. You don't want to have to risk your uh, Qian Pao getting knocked out immediately. So we're going to see the Raging Bolt come out. Uh, Incineroar Intimidate is going to come into play as well. Not going to matter too much, thanks to the Raging Bolt being a special attacker primarily, but it's still not pleasant nonetheless. You know what's something that I just realized that kind of just hurt my brain a little bit? What's I kept bringing up the fact that, oh, Ursula is going to get slept. It's burned. It can't get slept. Right. I, I, I like, completely, I don't know how that You're completely, completely, like, missed right. my mind yeah. at all. Wow. Yeah, the Terrasalization is going to come through for the sign of Jean Ulysses, and they're going to put it on a Pokemon we don't know yet. We're going to have to kind of wait and see. Uh, it's going to go towards the uh, Raging Bolt. It's going to terrorize Fairy. 
Terrestrialization Fairy type now. Fake Out is going to hit the Amoongus, so no Spore going to be coming out onto the That's Incineroar. Good. Facade is going to be landing on Raging Bolt to oh. almost knock it out, but Draco Meteor most likely never mind. I thought it would at least take it down into the red, but Ursula is such a bulky Pokemon, it's going to only take a little bit of damage there. Well, as little bit of damage as you can get with the Draco Meteor. It's going to be slightly below half thanks to that burn as well. But Among Us, uh, you know, you really want to get some kind of effective play coming out from it, but there's just really not a lot. It can, this is the one situation where your Among Us really isn't that scary. Uh, parting Shot could come out, but your Raging Ball's going to go down soon anyways. Uh, you, you don't want to waste a turn on that. Parting Shotting Among Us is kind of a waste of a turn as well, but you do kind of want to get your Incineroar out of here, I feel. How you're going to go about that, I'm not sure. Do you want to get your Incineroar out of here right now? I feel like you do. There isn't really much it can presently threat, and Earthquake could threaten both of the Pokemon on the side of Ashen. Incineroar well, would take a huge amount of damage for that. Incineroar is just going to get slept right now. Yeah. I was going to say, like, Ashen... Incineroar is, like, super threatening towards the Amoongus, but yeah, the, the Spore is going to come through. Ursaluna is going to clean up the Amoongus just immediately, and honestly, this Thunder... This, like... What, whatever Raging Bolt is going to do right now is going to put huge damage on Incineroar. Bolt Switch comes through for sure. Actually, it doesn't even do that much, to be fair. And it's oh. going to go back, but it's, it's going to come back out like pretty much immediately. On the side of Jean Ulysses, I was thinking, why would you not go for the getting rid of certain Pokemon on the field there? I'm thinking now, it's most likely the uh, the Urshifu in the reserves right now, and that Pokemon is going to be able to threaten everybody, no matter what. So you don't even really need to preserve your Ursaluna. You're fine with your Ursaluna going down, because you still have a, an Urshifu in the back line. Uh, so with the Trick Room still up, I believe it has just one turn left. Yeah. Sucker Punch coming up from Shen Pao, Volt Switch. Uh, it seems to be the comp contemplated play here. Thunderclap could also be a viable play as well, just to get rid of the Ursaluna. Priority moves, you know, superseding the Trick Room. That could be a smart play, but... Oh, and the Incineroar is asleep, so what else would you really do? I, I like this play, but unless the Ursaluna protects, you're kind of just... Uh, it's a bit of a risk. I'm not sure. Uh, Ursaluna not even going to be able to use Earthquake here, which would have been a pretty solid move overall to use in this situation because uh, Incineroar would be going down because of it. But with drawing the Ursaluna, it actually, he brought the Registeel in this first game. A very defensive Pokemon, I believe, if not the highest physical defense uh, stat, one of the highest uh, defense stats in the game. But, oh, what failed there? I was looking at you for a second there. Both Thunderclap and Sucker Punch. For some right. reason, Ashton went into a thunderclap into a ground type where it has no effectiveness at all registeel comes out and completely negates the entire turn it wastes the room the, the turn of trick room it wastes the turn of the sleep and incinero is going to come back like come back out first luna or is going to come back in um a great turn from john ulysses but like even still ursaluna is low right incinero is put to sleep it's going to be tough Registeel is going to protect to try and stall at the turn for sure. And as you can see, Chen Pao gets the easy, easy cleanup onto Ursaluna. And with that Ursaluna out of the battle, you don't really have many threats left. Registeel, definitely a very defensive Pokemon, but it has Heavy Slam, Body Press, Protect, and Iron Defense. Incineroar coming back out to do with that Intimidate, going to make Chen Pao slightly bit weaker. But whether or not Registeel is going to be able to get rid of both the Rage Pool and Chen Pao, I don't have a lot of confidence in that. I mean, you do have two Pokemon with priority moves, so like it kind of helps out a little bit. But I mean, I, it's this is tough. The Raging Bull is super weak, it's super low. Your Chen Pao is a super frail Pokemon. So if Raging Bull can go down here and both Pokemon stay alive, you're hoping Incineroar can... You have to also think as well, Registeel is the only Pokemon that can currently attack unless Incineroar wakes up right now. True. This is tough. A lot to consider in this turn, balancing the Incineroar being asleep, balancing the uh, options that Registeel might go for, balancing a lot of things, but with only 10 seconds just a second ago, both players had to commit to something here. Sacred Sword going on to Registeel, super effective. Doesn't look like it though on that stat line, not doing a lot of damage. Draco Meteor following up next, taking it down to half HP. Special attack harshly reduced on the Raging Bolt. Now it's definitely not much of a threat, with the Iron Defense coming out now. Uh, Sacred Sword still going to do the same damage, I believe, if Sacred Sword has the effect 
effect that I believe it has, which will make it so that it will go through any defense <laughs> uh, changes. So this turn, basically just doing a lot of damage to Registeel. Registeel basically doing a sword stance for all intents and purposes. Raging Bolt is now basically not Pokemon, and Incineroar is still asleep. <laughs> what a turn. BGC is known for its speed, but we've basically seen two turns where nothing's happened. Pretty Incredible. much. I, I mean, like two, like, ba like you said, basically two turns where nothing happened. Obviously, the two priority turns where nothing happened. They Literally nothing. Into the Earth's Luna. Literally nothing happened on that turn. And, and again, sort of the same thing. So you see the Terrestrialization coming through for Zhong Yuli sees as he's going for the Terrestrialization onto the Registeel, going for Terra Water. And this is going to be very strange. I, I, I think Ashton went for another Draco Meteor again, so it's not going to... Oh, it did go for the Thunderclap onto the Incineroar. That would have been a tough move if he did go into into the Registeel and Incineroar is going to get knocked down to about one fourth of their HP but it's going to get healed back up from the Citrus Barrier. Incineroar now back in the battle. It's going to go for the Flare Blitz onto oh. the Chen Pao and that is the Focus Sash consumed. This battle is still close. It really felt like it got away from us for a second but now we're in a situation where both players are as good never mind. Body Press coming out to get rid of the Chen Pao. It's just a 27 HP Raging Bolt with a uh, double Draco Meteor stat reduction? Or is it, I think it's just because like, the Dissuade Can Ashton make a comeback for game two? I'm pretty confident that Ashton can, considering how relatively close that last one was. Mm -hmm. A couple of uh, scary last-minute plays kind of going the way of Jean Ulysses, kind of bringing it back. I feel like if Ashton just cleans up the game plan a little bit more, again, it's a very flexible team lineup available. Uh, Registeel with the Water Terra. I was about to say, you know, Ogre Pond of Fire could be a big threat to the Registeel, but it is a Water Type Terra, uh, terra Type. It still is, though. It's, uh, it's, it it's, still is. It still is, right? Obviously, it's got... Uh, what what, did, what did it bring? Stomping Tantrum. It doesn't even have another grass move. It brought Stomping Tantrum instead of like Woodhammer or like Horn Leech. Interesting. That's so interesting. I don't think I've ever seen Stomping Tantrum. Chat, you gotta let us know. <laughs> stomping Tantrum. Uh, super common. I, I've never seen it. Personally, I like I haven't. I, this is the first time I've ever seen Stomping Tantrum on an Ogre Palm Heart Flame uh, before. What I am thinking about right now, though, mm -hmm. is would you want to use your uh, your Terra on any other Pokemon? Like, is there anything, any specific reason you would not for want Ashton? a Terra? Uh, for Jean, rather. Uh, like, is there a reason you wouldn't use your Terra Water on your Registeel? Uh, of course, unless you just don't bring it into the battle. I feel like that might be the play in most circumstances. If you are worried that your Registeel might be considered a threat, the only way to deal with it on the side of Ashton is the Ogre Bomb. No, uh, so, I'm not sure. I mean, for Jean, it really depends, right? You have some defensive Terra types that you're kind of looking towards, right? Registeel is going to go for the water, obviously, like we just saw. Um, but you could lean into, uh, like, and Incineroar has water, like, water Terra as well. Um, but, like, yeah, you can lean into, like, being super offensive. Urshifu, single strike, has a stellar Terra type. Yeah. Right? So does Chen Pao, actually. It's very, it's very, it's very strange. Very strange indeed. Um, but you still have some like offensive terror types to like lean into as well. Um, John Ulysses is kind of leaning more towards being defensive, um, and like is a very much like a stall, very defensive heavy team. Um, but we'll kind of see how things go in here as we have the leads: Ashton Cook, Cox going for Urshifu and Amoongus. John Ulysses with an Incineroar and Cresselia lead, the mirror lead as they had last game, if I'm if I remember correctly. I believe last battle i don't think the incinerator was out i think it was something else i'm not sure though. i think I, I think it was the incinerator and it parting shot into the ursula you're right yeah i think so right. so now with the urshifu leading out alongside the amungus this does present an opportunity for ashton to get a quick pick off or it could pivot back into one of the mons surging strike is going to commit onto the cresselia and a switch in uh to bring out the Chen Pao from the Amoongus, recognizing that it's not going to have a lot to do here. 
you just want to get it off. Because, again, Cresselia is still going to be able to get the Trick Room off most. May Actually, no. If the Urshifu hits it first, it, there's a chance that the Cresselia goes down. It has safety goggles, not Focus Sash. I think the Urshifu has a good chance of knocking out the Cresselia before Trick Room can come off. Yeah. Uh, so, as we see the Water Terror coming out into the Urshifu, just to boost the damage of the Surging Strikes even more, this Cresselia's life is in jeopardy for sure. Yeah, the Surging Strike's coming through, and it's going to go on to the Cresselia for sure. Cresselia will live this. It will live on extremely low HP on about a quarter. About a quarter HP, but um, it, it's still a good move from him for sure. Bringing your Trick Room team, like Trick Room Setter, to a super low oh. HP is obviously good. Chen Pao's going to live from the Focus Sash. Um, but still, still pretty tough. I do think that Ashing. Who, who did he leave? He le le led with a Moongus, correct? Mm -hmm. That that Flare Blitz was just the right play no matter what. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the switch was the right play too. Obviously, you know that Shen is gonna live. You know that Cresselia is gonna go for Trick Room, so you're not worried about Shen Pao just falling by like a double, uh, a double direct like towards um, the Moongus slash Shen Pao. So it, it was a good switch, but it is still really tough to have to sacrifice that Focus Sash oh, and punch, leave Shen Pao on one HP. Yeah, I mean, the Shen Pao will most likely go down, but it could get the Sucker Punch off on Cresselia with the Surging Strikes coming out from Urshifu Correct. onto the Incineroar. You could potentially threaten to wipe both Pokemon here. So, John Ulysses still has to consider that fact. I'm pretty sure he, at the very least, knows the Sucker Punch is on the Shen Pao. So, he might even consider switching instead of going for the rest of the plays that he's trying to make. Again, Cresselia kind of served her purpose. Uh, most likely, going to get sacked here, but the Protect coming out. Just call any shifty plays out. Incineroar using Flare Blitz. It's gonna get protected. Okay, so Incineroar was gonna Flare Blitz to Shen Pao. Lunar Blessing is gonna be used here. That's going to heal the Cresselia up quite a bit, as well as the Incineroar. I still don't think the Incineroar survives this. I think it goes down pretty consistently. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna go down for sure. The Incineroar definitely goes down here. Either Pokemon does go down regardless of what happens here. Like if he went into the Cresselia, Cresselia goes down. If he goes into, um, into Incineroar, Incineroar goes down as well. But this is still a good play. This is still a good turn, right? You're stalling the turns of this Trick Room and that's what you want to do for Ashen right now. Ashen really wants to just play out these turns. Protecting with Shen Pao, Yes, Chen Pao is technically right now the slowest Pokemon on the field to the <laughs> Trick Room. Um, so Chen Pao is kind of useless right now. It, it will die. Mm -hmm. As long as somebody targets him, as long as Registeel or uh, Cresselia targets, Chen Pao I... will fall. So that Protect is a good move. It stalls one turn and at least makes sure that, like, you know, it mitigates the damage that will go to other Pokemon through this, uh, you know, through this Trick Room. I, I do see the, the value of that turn now. I didn't consider the Lunar Blessing from Cresselia. <laughs> so I didn't know I had that move, but I didn't know what that move did until I just saw it. So, uh, you know, Sucker Punching probably wouldn't have been the best play yeah. in that uh, set. So, yeah, a, a smart play from both players in that circumstance. Not really a lot you could have done. Maybe a parting shot from the Incineroar. I'm not sure how that would have factored speed wise. The swap from Shen Pao is. A swap to Amoongus from Shen Pao. Okay. It's very on. strange. I'm assuming they want to keep the, uh, the you know, Shen Pao for after Trick Room falls. Because Ashen's going to go for the Surgeon Strikes onto the Cresselia. It'll be interesting to see what Jean Ulysses does end up terrestrializing. Is going to go for the Water Terra again onto the Registeel. Uh, very smart as well. Registeel is super bulky and is going to be able to live those Surging Strikes, obviously, from Urshifu. Going for the Iron Defense, you know, trying to body press uh, sweep um, for him right now. Cresselia's going to go for the Ice Beam Ooh. onto Amoongus and does quite decent damage. Remember, Urshifu, uh, sorry, Amoongus is super super bulky so he's gonna be able to live that surging strikes are gonna come through and Cresselia will fall for sure from these three surging strikes um no i i don't know no he definitely does fall like he definitely does fall he, he was, i thought it was probably like he was half hp um it did about 75 percent last time around so it was, it was guaranteed to fall right there uh it's still just tough though because Cresselia is obviously very bulky as his entire as john ulysses his entire team is for sure Every Pokemon, doesn't matter if they're damage dealt, like dealing Pokemon like Registeel or Saluna, they're super, super bulky. For sure, coming out now. We're gonna see the Ursaluna coming into play, which the ground typing with that Thunderclap play, uh, well, it didn't get the speed utilized, but just a reminder that Ursaluna is a ground typing. It gains ground typing from the evolution, which again, something that I'm considering now into how you wanna play around it. Uh, the Amoongus is, is sitting at about half HP. Uh, the Ursaluna is also holding a Flame Orb, so I'm not, again, with the Trick Room in play, it's still in play. 
I think so. It is. I think so it's, in, it's in play for four. another two turns. And Mugus is the first one to move because it's the slowest Pokemon on the field, so it still is in play. I think it has another two turns left, so this turn and maybe the next one, if I do remember correctly. Registeel is going to fall asleep. The Earthquake is going to come through and do considerable damage, but Amoogus is going to be able to heal from that Citrus Berry. So now both of them are sitting about a little bit above half HP, so you're still at a good point right now for Ashen. I was... I thought that maybe sporing the Ursaluna might have been a, uh, a more safe play because that would have prevented it from getting the Flame Orb, yeah. right? And then you're also putting it to sleep. The Registeel... It won't matter, though, because Ashen's gonna... just going to knock it out just yeah. right now. That Ursaluna like that. didn't have much effectiveness, for like to be honest, like at all. And then sleeping, the Registeel prevents it from setting up. Exactly. Uh, which would have been quite annoying to deal with uh, because it would just be throwing out heavy slams and body presses with Iron Defense, like, times two. Uh, and your Ursaluna... Or, sorry, your uh, Ursaluna wouldn't really be able to do too much against that. So Trick Room still in play, uh, single strikes, uh, just uh, Surgeon Strikes rather, against this standing Registeel. I think this is our first 1-1 one -one we're seeing today. As it is, guess. and I think Ashton still has one in the back line as well, if I do remember correctly. I think it does. I, I'm, it does have Chen Pao, I forgot. Um, but the, it woke up right away, immediately. It was only asleep for like a turn, a two maybe. Was yeah. it asleep last turn? Like, did, uh, didn't it just fall asleep last turn? It did. It, did it woke up like pretty asleep. much right away. Well, look at the damage. It's doing like nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it is doing pretty much nothing. Yeah, the iron defense is obviously doing its job, and it's just gonna start body pressing and sweeping the rest of the team. Crits. You I'm have to. Sure. Yeah, crits are guaranteed for surgery. No, but crits ignore uh, defense boosts, no? Oh, they do. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, just it's just that much bulkier than yeah. anything on the field. Yeah, that's pretty much that's insane. Yeah, so oh, it has all four. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's pretty much game for Ashen at, at this point. Ashen has just has to do some damage. But it is information. You know, yeah. with the Urshfu, you see how much damage it would do in its peak form. Like with the Iron Defense plus the Water Terra. Now we can see for sure. Surgic Strike does about, like, maybe slightly more than a quarter damage. Maybe a uh, sixth? Around, yeah. So... This is information that Ashton can use going to the next game. Again, this battle is most likely going the way of Ashton, but again, you at least want to collect as much data as possible. The body press will knock out the Urshifu, uh, but still, so many other threats come one completely unrevealed Pokemon from John Ulysses' perspective. So, as we wrap up this next battle, both players are going to be just considering what they're going to be taking into the next one. Yeah, Ashen is, like you said, is going to clean up this battle for sure. Flutterman is going to come through and then just pretty much clean up the rest of the game. There's no Trick Room, so both are going to be able to get hits. It, it's just, it, it's over at this point. Yeah, John Ulysses is going to cancel the battle. We're going into a game three for the first time Woo! of any of the sets that we've had so far. And, and it's nice to have it come so early too. I remember last time we were on the desk, it took about two... Uh, the top cut until we got wow. to like quarterfinals. I don't even think in quarterfinals I think we had it. I think we had it in only semis and in grand finals where we had games go to game three. Everything was pretty much a clean sweep for the Swiss stages and for like, you know, the first round of top cut, but it's nice to see that come uh, so soon. You know, it's interesting. We love to see game threes. We love long drawn out games. It's very oh, interesting. Yeah. Very fun. Because like you said before, we'd like to yap and the longer the series goes. I love we'll like yapping. Yap about. Speaking of yapping, going to this next game, both players have some decisions to make tough Tough mm -hmm. calls. What calls are you expecting that some of these players are going to be making? Um, for Jean, on the side of Jean, for example, like Ashen made really good changes, right? You know, you needed to put the uh, Registeel to sleep, or else the Registeel can just bot, like iron, uh, sorry, iron defense and just get out of control pretty we saw quickly. It actually, is a threat. We saw it in the first game. Saw that it was a threat. Ashton comes back in the second game, changes up their game plan, puts uh, Registeel to sleep, um, and, and it just, like, wins off at that point. After, you know, being up 4-1 at a certain point, like, you're pretty much fine. You're pretty much chilling. Um, for this side of Jean, I, I, I'm not too sure. I, I can't think of anything off at the top of my head. Um, maybe bring Raging Bolt, because they didn't bring Raging Bolt that game. Raging Bolt can do a lot of damage, obviously, onto uh, Urshifu Water, which was really their saving grace. Like, yeah. Urshifu was really Ashton's, like, key number one uh, Pokemon right there. I, I think if you're Jean, you need to bring Raging Bolt. Um, 
but uh, but I'm not I'm not too sure. That Ursaluna didn't get too much play though. It came in, wasn't burned, True. right? Well, so it didn't have that it didn't have that damage boost, um, and then it just got cleaned up by the Urshifu. I, I, I'm thinking Raging Bolt. I'm thinking Raging Bolt comes in, maybe Electro Webs to like lower the speed a bit. I don't know. We'll have, we'll have to wait and see. Well, well, you're not gonna have to wait too much longer as we are gonna see the Raging Bolt coming out alongside the Incineroar for going the typical Cresselia lead. Uh, it is interesting, like you're mentioning, that is another way to control the speed with the Electro Web. You will still be able to use your slower. Pokemon to kind of get things done, but now you are facing down two of some of the strongest sweepers in the game right now. You have the Fluttermane staring you down, it is Specs, so Dazzling Gleam will be doing an insane amount of damage. You're gonna call back your Yoshiku. I think that might have been a very smart way to look at it. I'll dive a little bit more into it after this next turn as we see the Amoongus coming out now from that pretty little quick ball, but we're gonna see the yeah. Terra immediately. It's, it's probably gonna be the Terra Fairy onto the um, Raging Bolt right now. Um, especially if Raging Bolt is staying in right now. Yeah, you see the Terra Fairy coming out. You know that Flutter is specced, obviously. So it, it is going to be like a super, super big damage onto uh, the Raging Bolt, especially if it didn't Terrasalize. So this is a good play for them. The, flat, the fake out's going to come through um, onto the Amoongus. It's not going to do anything because Amoongus did swap in. Um, but yeah, the, Dazzling, like the Moon Blast didn't do too much right there. Electro Red comes in. Obviously, the speed drop happens. And... No, this is this is a solid turn. This is a solid turn on both sides. Ashton doesn't have to waste, um, you know, the damage that would have went onto Urshifu Water, um, and you know, uh, Johnny Ulysses obviously doesn't have to, you know, get one hit knocked out by the Moon Blast after Terrasalizing. So a good turn. And the thing I was mentioning before, leading with the Urshifu Flutter, I mean, I think that kind of lets you decide what kind of offense you want to lean into right from the start. Is this a good time for an Urshifu or is this a good time for a Flutter main? You're going to find out on for, uh, turn one, you just switch out whichever one's not good in the circumstance. You have that in the reserve, and then you leave the one, the other one left to just constantly be a problem. So with now, you have your Flutter main with an Amoongus that could be used for redirection, that could be used for sleeping, could be used for a lot of things. But uh, with the Moon Blast coming out once more, going to do some more damage to the Raging Bolt. But the Snarl coming out, going to reduce the special attack for both the players here. This uh, this effective Raging Bolt, I really like how it's kind of being utilized, but the Flare Blitz is going to almost KO you. Oh Amoongus. my Not even gosh. sashed. Not even Just sashed. lived on one HP. Literally. I think that's the first time in the last two weeks that we've done this these casts, like these casts at all, that we've seen just a Pokemon live on one HP without a sash and, and that's that, pretty insane that's going to result in your raging bolt going down this is a situation where the, the the dice rolls you wish you could control them but sometimes the damage spread just works in your favor and it will result in your amoongus knocking out the raging bolt now you have no choice but to send out your rage or your registeel i was called that raging steel uh and raging steel baby <laughs> that's next generation uh, just like sun <laughs> like sundance Oh yeah, like Sundance. If for those who don't know, I I came in this morning and I said Sundance instead of Rain Dance or, yeah. or Sunny Day or both. But I conceptualized that actually be an interesting uh, move. Sundance, 50% chance to set sun, 50% chance to set rain, but it sets it for eight turns, and that could be put on a lot of different Pokemon. So I think that would. What are we talking about right now? I'm talking about. Let's talk the about the Dance. game. That's a good point. <laughs> but the game is looking pretty consistent. It's very standard for what we're seeing for the most part. Registeel is out. That's a threat that you're gonna have to deal with. And what better th way to deal with it than your Urshifu? It's gonna be able to be doing a lot of potent striking. Uh, and there's no Terra Water anymore. So your Urshifu That's actually true. will be able to be a pretty consistent threat. Yeah, the close combats are obviously gonna do a ton of damage now, now that it can't terrestrialize into water. Um, and, and even if it does just going for the normal like surging strikes onto like Registeel, it's still gonna do way more damage than it did last game. Flare Blitz comes through, doesn't really do too, too, too much damage. Um, yeah, the Iron Defense comes out, going for that body press sweep like we saw in the last game. I think Surging Strike is still to play just to get rid of the um, boost from the R in defense. Again, critical hits and ignore yes. um, defense boost. Yes. So, uh, yeah, you want a Surging Strike, it's not going to resist it anymore because it's not a water type. Yes. So this is still, I don't know if I want to say it's going to uh, do a lot of damage, but it's definitely going to do enough to matter. Uh, so Registeel is going to be a little less threatening. 
but it's still a presence on the field that's going to be felt for a long time. Fluttermain won't, though. As it gets switched out, we're most, who we're going to be seeing coming out is going to be the Chen Pao. That could feel some pain from the Incineroar Flare Blitz. It's, it did no real damage to the Urshifu, but we're going to see the Terrastalization come out, Terra Water onto the Urshifu just to make it even stronger. And why not, you know, make it do five extra damage to the Red Steel. <laughs> it's probably going to be more than that, but still, uh, with how tanky this Red Steel is, it's going to be very painful. But it might even go into the Incineroar. No, we're going to go for the Red Steel right now. That's going to be about half HP, if not slightly more. Yep, it's going to be down to maybe uh, maybe one-sixth HP remaining. Let me just do it. We're going to see the Flare Bits come out. It's going to hit the Urchifu once again, taking it down to 72 of 176, about the same HP percentage as the Red Steel. Brody Press is going to take it down to nothing. Your Urchifu is gone, out dusted. It's nothing left, which is definitely a downside for sure, but you still have your Fluttermane in the back line to kind of sweep things out. Owen, what are you feeling about that? The Surging Strikes into the um, Registeel is the play, right? Critical hits negate the like status effects, um, like it negates the like the iron defense, right? And you don't want Registeel to get out of control. This is what we've been talking about. We don't want Jean's uh, like Registeel to get out of control, right? Um, but the Terrestrialization, like you know that you can't go for the body press onto uh, the Fluttermane. Fluttermane is a ghost type. He could switch. You, you know that you can't go onto it. He could switch, sure, which he did. Uh, but but it's still a tough like it's a tough call. Uh, it, it, it was a really tough round for Ashton. Ashton did have a good like play, did have a good read with the switch in, um, and obviously the surging strikes, like, you know, doing considerable amount of damage. But you know, committing the terrestrialization for that one turn to then get knocked out pretty much immediately, it, it is tough. It's a tough call. It's a tough sight to see. I Follow, follow me on this. Yes. I feel like this is a weird... <laughs> follow me? <laughs> oh, hold on. I'll talk about it a little bit after. Sacred Sword gonna be knocking out the Registeel immediately, and that will force Jean Ulysses to reveal his last Pokemon after this turn, but the Moonblast gonna knock out the Incident of Marie. It's going to be a 1v3 for Jean Ulysses. And with this last Pokemon, being sent out, it will be the Urshifu. I don't know if it has what it takes to take on all of Ashton's team, but in fact, I'll save it for after this game because the point I was about to make, uh, I think we could yap about it for quite a bit, but yeah. battle is going to be a uh, forfeit. It's going to go the way of Ashton recovering from, I believe he lost game one. So He did. It yeah, he did lose game one. Oftentimes when you see these games, like these sets that go to three, I think every time, Except for the grand finals of the first tournament that we did watch, mm. every set go, like that goes to game three, it ends up being the person who lost the first game that goes ahead and wins it. It's the it's the like you know the changes, it's the adaptations that you make uh, to playing against your opponent that really like helps you like win these sets. And Ashton did a great job. Um, obviously, like committing all your resources on making sure that Registeel was taken out right away after that first game because Jean immediately in that first game right. That Registeel was out of control and was doing so much damage onto um, onto Ashton's team, but he took a second, realized, hey, we, we got to take advantage of this right now, right now, right? We got Urshifu, we have Sacred Sword, right? We can take this out pretty like pretty easily, and that's what he did, and it worked out really well for him. Absolutely, and I feel like Ashton really demonstrated the soul of a trainer, uh, demonstrating how you can use your Pokemon to the best of their abilities to circumvent your opponent's strengths and then exploit their weaknesses. So very very well done to both trainers here. But to touch on that battle just a little bit, just looking at the Registeel and Incineroar just sitting on the field there, I felt like, what I was going to say was like, I feel like we're seeing a situation where these Pokemon are being utilized in a way that accentuates their strengths, but in a way that we've just like never seen before. Like Incineroar is not often on the field for that long it's usually there for like one or two turns before it parting shots out or whatever and it's just switch in yeah and intimidate but that incineroar came out and it stayed there for like six turns mm -hmm. and it it worked <laughs> like the register and like that's a part of incineroar that is effective but you never see that side of incineroar you know what i mean yeah and the same with the register well register i feel like is the thing that kind of sparked that register forced both players to play so differently uh it's um it's like 
it's a type of defensive mon that makes you play offensively in a weird way different yeah. way you get what i'm saying yeah i get what you're saying yeah. obviously you saw it's incinero weird. go for fake out like maybe once or twice but yeah. it never clicked taunt at never. all never never clicked taunts at it all parting shot i don't even once. i think it parting shot the first game on among us maybe yeah on a, on like the yeah, among us like it core. just stood there in flare blitz we, and it worked you do have to remember though flare bits flare blitz sorry um is a super strong move. It is. Incineroar is a good attacking Pokemon. It has is. good attacking stats. Obviously, it wants to go for those supporting moves, Look right? That's why most Incineroar in sets <laughs> are just Flare Blitz and then, like, Taunt, Parting Shot, and then Fake Out. Um, so, like, it can go for those, like, you know, Flare, flare Blitz, and you just click and spam. Uh, but <laughs> anyway, Sorry, I'm done with this point, man. I, I, I got to touch on these kids. Look, did, you, did you see that, uh, the floss that he did? Yeah, yeah, You see yeah. that floss? He's got some good moves. Let me see it. Put him up in the sky. Come on. Let me see yeah, oh, never mind. It goes back. <laughs> well, now uh, we're back to the boys. But I like the floss. Like, you know, he did the... Come on. Do it with I'm me. I'm not doing don't, that. Don't be like a ninja, man. Come on. I have to. This is a, this is a part of... This me. is a professional broadcast. I am a we professional. need to... No dance moves allowed. None. No fun allowed. What I will think is fun, though, is analyzing and breaking down just a little bit the point we were making, right? The part of Incineroar, like I said, we saw these Pokemon mm -hmm. exacerbate their strengths or accentuate their strengths, whatever X word you want to use, okay? Uh, we need a thesaurus. Th <laughs> <laughs> I think you need sleep. But <laughs> the Pokemon really went about going and showing how they're strong in the ways we never really see them. Yeah. The Incineroar is just showing... Oh, wow. I forgot Incineroar is an insane attacker. Actually. I can do damage. <laughs> wow. This I, is insane. I forgot about that. So we got to see that side of Incineroar in that battle. Uh, ended up working in the favor of Ashen, though. He was able to take the battle. Uh, and now, you know, we are all, we're heading our way into round four pretty soon. What are, you, what are you expecting to see? So I, I made the point before, like, what we're going to see in round three kind of dictates yeah. what's working here and what's not. Uh, I feel like based off of what we saw here, I still think there's room for diversity in the team pool what do you think a hundred percent like ashton came in still with a balanced team brought in a lot of the like top top uh like pokemon in the format like brought out fluttermane ogre palm hearth flame raging bull mm -hmm. urshifu these are four of the pokemon that are within the top like six of usage rates in like vgc right now mm -hmm. um so like all super strong pokemon amoongus shen pao these are all pokemon within the top 10 usage mm -hmm. like every single one of them. maybe shen pao falls out a little bit out of that top 10 but that's still a ton of like the really good strong pokemon to bring out so ashton comes out with a super super balanced team whereas john comes out with it like this trick rooms team has Chrysalia. some sort of it has Chris, Chris Chrysalia, registeel has some sort of niche picks right there obviously has some sort of like you know the strong pokemon like you have ursa luna urshifu single but strike which we didn't even see that much to be honest ursa luna is usually the blood moon i, I didn't really get to see the uh, regular one before. it kind of depends yeah it, it's very dependent i do think blood moon is stronger in certain cases um it pairs with uh Fregoraph really well since both of them have hyper voice um so oftentimes when you do see trick room teams instead of Cresselia ursa luna hesuian you oftentimes see uh blood moon ursa luna and uh sorry for mm -hmm. just because like I, like I said both can uh hyper voice super strong move and it's a spread move um so they pair really well it just kind of depends on like what kind of uh trick room sort of core you want to go for like you said We've been seeing balanced teams pretty much all day. This is the only time where we've seen a team that sort of fits a mold, a team that goes for a certain direction. Um, so it'll be nice to see. I want to see a sun team. Give me a sun team. Give me a rain team. Psy spam if you want to. Blizzard spam with Articuno if you Spend want to. Something. Let me see some sort of diversity. It's just been all balanced teams, which, is, which are good. And those t sort of teams are very strong. They're strong Pokemon for a reason. They're within the top 10 of usage for a reason. And we get all that. But I want to see some diversity. I want to see some fun strats. I completely agree. And as we get ready to throw it to a quick break, as we head into round four, I believe that, you know, in round three, if we're still seeing some unique teams like John Ulysses, I think we're going to still see some interesting teams heading into round four. But we're just going to have to wait and see. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully we'll see you guys after this break. Or potentially.